Good morning. I'm Lynn Morgan, your Slipper Shod Pastor. You know the Bible is filled with wonderful stories that are inspiring, that give us role models of how to live and love and, and to, to lead our lives, but not all the stories of the Bible are so straightforward in their usefulness in terms of modeling our lives after their example. In fact, there's a good number of the Bible stories that are troubling that show violence and revenge and things like this that we really would not want to enshrine as ethical guidelines for our lives. And as we're pursuing the daily lectionary's path through the book of Exodus, we come to a section that is just that kind of story, one that's difficult for us to make use of. This story, which we refer to as the Golden Calf Incident, is kind of a long story, which we won't go into in full, but which I'd like to recap for you. Moses has shared the Ten Commandments with the people of Israel, to which they've consented. And then God invites Moses to go to the mountaintop to receive further instruction. And in fact, to receive the Ten Commandments engraved by God on stone tablets. Moses is gone for 40 days and 40 nights, and in that period of time, the people of Israel lose their patience or wonder that maybe he isn't coming back down. And so they, they implore Aaron, Moses' second in command, to make for them a graven image, which they've just been instructed not to do, but they ask for it. And Aaron, being the spineless wonder that he is, or perhaps being a person who's in some ways intentionally undermining the leadership of Moses because he would like the top job. Anyway, he consents to what the people are clamoring for and they make a golden calf. And they don't worship the calf itself, but they use the calf as a, a totem whereby they might worship the Lord who has brought them out of Egypt. But of course, it's a horrible perversion of the very truth that they are supposed to be living by. Well, Moses is instructed by God that this is going on and, and that there's all kinds of revelry and sexual immorality also associated with this worship of the golden calf. And he comes down from the mountain and he's super ticked. And so he breaks the stone tablets, throws them down, and then he, he instructs his people that they have to make a choice. He says, if you're with me and following the law that God has given us, then you come and stand with me. And if you're on the other side, well then, God help you. And so the Levites in particular come and stand with Moses as the loyal followers of God. And Moses says to these Levites, and I suppose whatever other folks were with the Levites, that they are to take their swords and they are to go attack and kill the idol worshipers who were not repentant of their sin, who would not stand with Moses to turn away from the thing that they had done that displeased God. And so on that day, it says more than 3,000 people were killed by the sword from the Levites under Moses' commandment. Now, you know, the, the massacre at Jonestown all those years ago involved like 900 people. And we still reel at the thought that, that a religious fanatic could result in that kind of bloodshed, well, death and destruction. But, you know, the Bible happily tells us that Moses instructed people to take swords and kill their fellow travelers through the wilderness because they had done something that displeased God and Moses. So this is a tough story to preach on, to think about. Except that if we understand this in a metaphorical way, we can make some use of it. Because in our journey from slavery to freedom, there are many points along the way in which we have to make choices about how we will follow, where we'll walk, and what we will commit ourselves to. And in every place where we make a choice, there is a cost to be paid. And sometimes 
the choices result in very serious costs for us and that failing to follow in the way of life will lead indeed to our death. 